Hello! Here's your see with some news about the Decaffeine development. You can see that I've posted that video into the new channel called Decaffeine because uh, I was posting the previous videos into my private channel and I just think that it's time to change that. To show you what's new, I finally got this little nifty device. It's called Raspberry Pi 400. It's a little bit more powerful than classic Raspberry Pi 4 and it can be more easily overclocked. So let's go and see what it can do. As you can see, the ports are quite similar as on Raspberry Pi 4. So we have there some Ethernet port, USB ports, the power, two HDMI outputs, uh, SD card slot and universal 40 pin connector. I've already installed the Decaffeine player, so we can directly open the management interface, log in with default password, and now we can see the base mode of the player. So we have to just select the mainstream, which I will choose some VLC stream on the network, okay and push the play button. That should be enough to start the stream. Yeah, it's working. But we have more options here. One is backup stream, which is used if the mainstream is not working currently. Uh, audio selection, if you have more audio cards in your computer. Low resolution option, uh, if you want to use less bandwidth uh, in the network, but of course you will have lower resolution of the video. Color conversion, which can be used if your video colors are not seem to be right. Keep ratio option. Uh, if your screen has different ratio than the NDI stream, then you can use this option and it will add the black borders to the video. There is an option for PTZ control. We will look to that closer later. And of course, the auto run after start option. But more interesting here is an advanced mode. What we have here is multiple outputs. So in my Raspberry, I've connected two HDMI outputs. So I can see their resolution. I can see their rotation. So I can rotate the display and I can see the options for the source selection. So for each output, I can select the different NDI source. So again, VLC for the first one and some webcam for the second one. Okay, let's push the play button. Ah, now we have two screens. But it's not all. For each screen, you can add multiple streams, which can be run inside. So I will just add some. One of them is 4K stream, so hopefully I don't have it in my selection, because then it will be horrible slow. OK, let's push the play button. As you can see, we have four streams in the left screen and just one stream on the right. But it's working, that's fine. Again, you have here an option to select the audio card. And if you select some, you can select which of the streams will produce the audio. Only one of the streams can be selected at the time.
you probably know that the decaffeine is not only player anymore, it's also the streamer. It can stream the picture from the connected USB cameras. So here I opened the streamer section and now I have multiple options to select the streaming device. So for example, I will use the first camera. I'll name it test A and I'll select the video format. I will use HD 24 FPS for example and start the stream. You can see that the camera on the left is now lighted up. It glows blue color, blue light. Okay, so we have one camera working. But the cafe now supports multiple cameras at once, so I can add the second camera called Test B. Also, I will select the similar resolution and frame rate, a little bit different, and push the stream button. Okay, now both cameras are working. I'll go back to the player section. I have advanced mode here, and I will try to play them. Okay, now I can see test A and test B. I will probably use two rows selection, so test A and test B. Okay, I have both of them here in the first screen and I will push the play button. Okay, <laughs> that's both cameras. The first one and the second one. Good, so it's somehow working. Here we can try the keep ratio option. And now there's right ratio for both cameras. Another new feature which is implemented into the Decaffeine player is PTZ control. Sadly, I don't have any PTZ enabled camera, so <laughs> I won't show you the real use case, but still, we can choose any stream we want and enable PTZ control. Now push the play button and okay, the image is horrible, but it's enough <laughs> for, for the example. So now if you push any button from one to nine, you can select the PTZ presets. If you use arrow keys, you can move the camera. Also, you can use plus or minus sign to zoom, to zoom the image. If we switch back to the web interface, the same applies to the control page. You can control the camera by clicking on the buttons or just using the keyboard. Both of them should work. Other sections are still quite the same. So in the network section, you can set the Raspberry IP address. And in the system section, you can change the admin password or maybe buy a license. <laughs> uh, there are two new things. The first one is extra NDI source IP address. Here you can manually enter the IP address of NDI source on your network. Sometimes it can help if you cannot see the source on the network. And the second option is simple API. This option will enable the REST server with some basic commands. So you can start the player, stop the player or change the player stream. So that's it. I hope you like the new features. I'll be happy if you post any comments with your experience with the decaffeine you had so far. And hopefully I'll be posting there some more videos on this new channel uh, quite soon. So that's all and bye for now. See you next time.